Uh, thanks all for coming. Um, my name is Vagrant Cascadian, and I'm going to be talking about RISC-V in Debian. Um, a little about myself. I've been a user of Debian since 2001, and increasingly gotten deeper and deeper involved over time. Uh, started acquiring various hats, uh, sort of called an arm porter, somebody told me once. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of work with ARM, and then I learned a bit about this uh, RISC-V thing uh, that was happening, and lo and behold, uh, kind of in early 2017, things really started to get rolling, and I got really excited. So um, that said, I haven't done a huge amount with RISC-V and Debian. I've mostly been an advocate and sort of nudged people to get stuff that was already upstream into Debian, you know, just a few months earlier than it might have otherwise. Um, how many of you know what Debian is? All right. I had no idea. Um, so yeah, uh, Debian, uh, one of the things that I think really makes Debian what it is is it's a volunteer-driven effort. Um, and while there is a lot of participation from uh, large entities with uh, lots of resources, it still is truly driven by volunteers uh, working in the project. Um, and so I think that's a really good corollary. Uh, it's a really good base to work on for uh, uh, Open Silicon because because there's no vested vendor interest in Debian that might pull strings, that might do weird things. So various vendors can all, they're all kind of competing on a similar field within Debian. Um, so there's a bunch of things called Debian ports. Uh, this is basically a, a, a Debian user land ported to typically a specific hardware architecture, although there are a few notable kernel uh, variants for Debian, um, though largely uh, the main dominant sphere is Linux. And uh, I believe RISC 564, which is a mouthful, um, is the re most recent port to be added to Debian. Um, and, and this is another thing with Debian is it, it already has a history of supporting a lot of hardware ports. So it's not like we have 10 officially currently supported ports. Um, some distros you might see, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of one to four ports typically. Um, but Debian already has a history of supporting a wide number of ports. Um, and this is good for uh, you know yet another port trying to get their software working on a coast coherent distribution um, because we're, we're used to getting bugs that are specific to some niche architecture and uh, treat them treat them as world class. Five and Debian is still an unofficial port, so it doesn't quite get all those privileges. It's not going to block a release or anything like that. Um, the infrastructure in Debian has so far largely been built on a community system virtual machines. Um, they've been hosted at MIT, CSAIL, and more recently, OSUSL, um, thanks to Tetra Neutral and the GCC Compile Farm project. Um, these have been keeping up remarkably well, uh, though it's maybe not the most efficient uh, uh, CPU cycle uh, use of uh, resources. So uh, we've started getting some more uh, actual real-world hardware. Sci Five donated a uh, High Five Unleashed board, and uh, rumor has it another one's coming soon, so that's pretty exciting uh, to see actual real world silicon. Uh, for most Debian ports, uh, it's normally considered bad form to be building on virtual machines. We actually build everything natively, and so for RISC V, uh, it's definitely there just isn't like server class hardware there yet to actually make it a real world port. Uh, would love to hear that change in the future. Um, so these machines have been working well for many months. They're building all of Debian. And what exactly is all of Debian? <coughs> like, uh, does anybody have a ballpark of idea of how many source packages are available in Debian? A hundred. <laughs> what am I hearing? I, I hear a hundred, eight thousand, ten thousand. 
Not quite that many thousand. Um, it's, it's more in the ballpark of 25 to almost 30,000 source packages, depending on how you count it. But uh, RISC-V only has to tackle a small part of that, because most of, many of the packages uh, only build for architecture at all, and they're only built on, uh, they're only built on uh, AMD64 machines. Uh, so things like uh, a package that only produces, say, documentation or Python scripts or Perl scripts or something like that. Um, we don't require all of the architectures to all have their individual copy of those packages. That said, um, there's still you know, over 10,000 packages that uh, we need to build that are by, uh, architecture specific. And uh, so far, we've managed to build uh, almost 12,000 of them for RISC-V and uh, about 1,207, approximately, are still waiting on tool chain changes uh, in order to actually be able to try and build. So, uh, you know, if you need a compiler and it's not available, uh, you obviously can't build that package yet. Uh, and then there are approximately three to 400 things that just fail to build and maybe need some porting work done uh, upstream. Uh, or, or fail to build for various other reasons, uh, need some more work to get uh, looking into. So uh, if you'll notice, you know, like that's like, uh, it's about seven, 1,700 ish packages uh, that aren't yet building, and about 12,000 that are, so that's a pretty good percentage. Um, it's like it's been sitting at around 85 percent, and just recently had a spike up to 88 percent of the archive built. So um, that's pretty exciting. That that's like almost everything. Um, but uh, as you all know, we're kind of hitting the last mile problem. So uh, additional fixes get harder and harder to to make any significant progress. But there's some light in, in that regard. Uh, the main things we're waiting on are some toolchain fixes. Uh, so as the work in LLVM, CLang, and Rust come around, uh, Rust, if, if we get Rust building on RISC-V and things go smoothly, that could easily unlock another 500 packages. And we're really looking at a, a, huge, a huge available pool of packages that you can uh, install and run on your RISC V systems. So, uh, where are we right now today? Uh, right now, Debian's in freeze. Uh, so, things are kind of, on the one hand, smoothing out for RISC V, and on the other hand, any new fixes from newer upstream versions, things like that, uh, they're just not going to happen right now in Debian. Um, hopefully, that'll be resolved in the next few months and then we can start to see some of the improvements in the, the RISC-V ecosystem in Debian. Uh, but right now, we're kind of sort of stalled out. It does give uh, the build machines a chance to kind of catch up on really large packages that take a long time to build because we're not seeing as much churn in Debian. Um, so in, on the one hand, it's a positive thing, and on the other hand, Anything that requires a new upstream fix just isn't going to happen over the next few months. Um, you can uh, get involved in Debian. It's a voluntary driven project. So if you are a driven person, if you are employed by somebody who wants you to do work to make Debian work for you, you can join in. Uh, probably the main contact point would be to go to the wiki page. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let's see here. And uh, thanks to Debian, thanks to uh, Manuele Fernandez Montescello, Karsten Merker, Arjun Jarno, and so many other people who have really made this thing happen. Um, I'm pretty excited about it all. Uh, and uh, apparently, I, uh, I targeted this for more like a 10 minute talk. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Any questions?
okay with the 12% package is that you uh, are too stubborn to go on t- to accept the Risk Five revolution. Are, uh, are there any particularly important ones that are missing? Um, yeah, well, uh, really targeting the tool chains, like I was saying, would fix you know hundreds of packages at a time. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure uh, what the other main blockers are. Uh, those main, once we get those compilers in, it'll be clearer what's left to do as well. But like, like X is available and stuff, if you can find hardware to actually run it on, for example. Um. And speaking of hardware, um, what do you see as the next minimum viable piece of hardware that people would be interested in here as they unleashed? Uh, what needs to be expanded upon or added or changed to make it uh, more widespread, even if it's just among developers? Right. Um, from an infrastructure perspective, we'd want something with like a real I.O. bus, like SATA, or, or at least USB 3, or something that you can get a significant amount of data back and forth through. Um, significant amount of RAM, more cores, you know, all, you know, more of all of that. <laughs> the basic stuff. Yeah, the, the, more of the basic core stuff, because running our, running our build machines on virtual machines is kind of, kind of leaves a bad taste in the mouth. Um, so we'd really like to see real server grade, you know, hardware, or at least almost server grade, you know. <laughs> Um, yeah, like uh, single board computers, uh, while I do maintain a build farm of like 20 some arm boards, uh, it, it's a pretty flaky build farm. <laughs> So at the moment, it looks like Debian is only targeting um, RISC 64-bit. Um, how would we go about getting um, RISC 32-bit support into Debian? Right. Um, I haven't done much work in the real core bootstrapping stuff, um, but basically there's a tool called Rebootstrap. Um, uh, well, Rebootstrap. Well, a lot of the tooling can be reused from Rebootstrap, which is used to like rebuild all of uh, AMD64 or something like that. Um, but there are a lot of tooling. You, you basically build your minimal like uh, um, Bootstrap C binaries, you know, your, your libc, your compiler, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, so basically, you start working on it and start talking to people. Um, I know right now, I think, Probably be more interested in just polishing the the risk fi- the risk five sixty four. I don't even know how to pronounce that. But uh, <laughs> um, uh, so I'm not sure in the immediate future. But uh, one thing about Debian is it's driven by people who scratch their own itch. So uh, if you're interested in it, you can just start working on it and start poking at it and start talking to people about it. And uh, yeah. It, that's one of the great things about it being volunteer driven is, is if you if you do the work, the work gets done. Um, in a similar kind of vein of that question, um, Risk Five Thirty Two bit would be similar to the ARM, like the very low end ARM type category. Um, does that mean you need a lot of low end ARM computers for that port, and would need a lot of low end Risk Thirty Two bit things, or like how is Debian dealing with the low end ARM? Um, so, on, so on ARM, um, we've been building stuff all pretty much on native hardware, although there, there are currently three active ports in, uh, of ARM and Debian. And um, one of them is targeting ARMv5, one of them, uh, give or take a little, and one of them is targeting ARMv7, and uh, the other one is ARMv8 64 bit. Um, we are looking at uh, building everything on uh, ARM64 machines or possibly virtual machines under ARM64. Um, so possibly if that thing, if that sort of thing makes sense on uh, RISC-V, you could build the nicer hardware RISC-V 64-bit <coughs> machines. So my question is about 
Logic compilers, uh, uh, Java, JavaScript, Chromium, browsers, <coughs> everything. So I, I guess this is a big question in the sense of uh, those runtimes carry JIT compilers in, in them and don't depend on compiling directly. Uh, do you see any progress in that? Really fit to comment <laughs> on that particular issue. Sorry. So, so back to the first question about 32-bit uh, support. Did I just hear you need the installer ported, and then that gets everything going? Uh, probably not. I mean, typically you might. Uh, you you can typically like cross. Uh, Cross build a true root using uh, Kimu. Kimu has like user mode emulation, so on on an AMD sixty four machine, you can you can actually build a a RISC RISC five sixty four true root on an ARM sixty four on a well an ARM sixty four or an AMD sixty four machine. So you can actually build a true root. Uh, so the installer is not necessarily a prerequisite, but it probably would be needed to have some form of installer to consider it an official architecture. But it's I probably not the first step. I have a question. So I know this uh, uh, very loud voice in the ARM community who uh, is pushing for standardization. Uh, so I, I want to answer, he says that uh, it's, it's not a real Thing if you don't have, if you can't run it on stock card, if you need some hardware specific hacks and things like that. So, what's the situation for RISC V and Debian? Are you using stock kernel or do you need some uh, device specific uh, hacks? Um, I just, like yesterday or the day before, actually booted an almost stock kernel. <laughs> um, and actually, we can boot a stock kernel in Debian and Kimu uh, for RISC. Uh, a RISC-V kernel, the one shipped in, I think, both the experimental archive and the unstable archive. Um, so um, it's <coughs> basically almost there. Uh, the, the thing that's missing is like BBL or uh, OpenSDI, something like that, um, which I've spent a little too much time in the last few days kind of trying to package that, so I have something ready for the top, but uh, kind of got a proof of concept working, but nothing shippable yet. But, but this was for QMU. Uh, yeah. Uh, and for real hardware, it's uh, even <laughs> it's a bit more. Or is it the same? I don't know. There's so little risk five hardware out there yet. It, it's hard to even know. I mean, ideally <coughs> we'd get to. A, I don't. I don't know. I I really hope we can avoid what happened in the ARM space. Uh, in that. Uh, Maybe you have a device tree built into the firmware, but it's incompatible with the way the Linux kernel thinks the device tree should be, you know, uh, describe properties. Um, so hopefully we can figure out some way to avoid that. Um, but yeah, uh, so I don't know. I, I don't know what the future holds, um, but uh, we should be thinking about the mistakes made on other architectures and try to avoid them. <laughs> Sounds good. Any more questions? Let's thank our speaker.